Hey guys, I'm back with top five tools and features for Affinity Designer. Oh wait, not that's not really right. This time I'm going to tell you about tools that I usually not use while working on my projects. So let's look into some strange tools. Why I don't use them? Is that my personal bias or maybe there's a better way, better solution? something else we can use instead. So let's uh, take a look. Five strange tools that I use very rarely. All right, so the first tool I wanna mention is rounded rectangle tool. Why do we even need a separate slot on the toolbar for that, right? This is simply a rectangle. So we're using rectangle tool, holding shift, all right. And now I can change corner settings from the properties at the top here. Rounded, done, same result. And even more, I can adjust this with even different style. And more than that, I can also draw a simple rectangle and then use a secondary tool called corner tool. And this way I can maybe round only two corners this time getting effect like this. So I don't really use rounded rectangle. I usually use the shape because you can use the corner tool with any shape. That's important. So we got triangle, corner tool, and we can round the corners as we please. So why I don't like this tool? One is taking the slot on the tool list. Second, it's kind of gets towards beginners and we are teaching beginners that there's like separate shape for round corners and then they're going to search for okay so where is the round corner triangle no we don't have that maybe it's not available so by making this easier for beginners we kind of making this harder later because they need to step back and learn oh that's actually was some kind of a trick and we can do it all by ourselves using the proper corner tool. So I'm not a big fan of rounded rectangle, almost never use that as my starting shape. The second tool that I don't use is actually transparency tool. And in this case, I don't think this is bad tool. I think it's my personal bias because a few years back, we're preparing illustrations for stock banks, so contractors, other graphic designers, people avoid transparencies in vector graphics because it can mess up uh, APS-8 standard, if I could remember. So we use a lot of gradients and a lot of tricks around transparency. So I still got this bias until now and I'm afraid of using this very straightforward transparency tool. So the tool is here, take a look. If I draw a shape like this one, this transparency tool here, it's act like a, some kind of gradient. So it's just hiding part of this, of the shape now. I can even change similar properties to gradient. Take a look, linear, elliptical, like that. So that's nice transparency tool. And I think it's not bad. I think that's just my personal bias that I not use that. So what I do instead, by the way, instead of that, I tend to, when I got shapes like that, I add a mask on it like this and then I using normal gradient on that mask and as you know the black color in the mask mean transparency so I kind of put masks on shapes maybe that's just my personal bias I'm too old <laughs> so there is transparency tool for us to use maybe I should start using that finally all right, my tool number three that I really, really use is the vector brush tool. So I'm not a big fan of it. Let's take a look. Here's, here it is. We got like pen tool, pencil tool, vector brush tool. Very similar tools, right? So we can draw and take a look. You can live see how the vector brush will act. So that's maybe helpful. And that's the only difference between this and pencil tool because I can do the same thing with pencil tool but I cannot see the line until I finish I got the line and now I can apply the same brush on it so that's the difference here and I'm the guy that usually use pen tool actually so I 
go with the pen tool and when I got like I'm very happy with the curve even use the note tool you know to make some changes and then at the very end I like to apply the effect if I use it so I definitely see the huge advantage of seeing the effect straight away while you are drawing but I still prefer to have this full control on my notes before applying this effect so I it's really nice tool but it's not for me I think so vector brush tool then arrange tool why do I need arrange tool in the program of this huge layer panel on the right side so if I want to rearrange stuff I just used my layer panel arrange tool is here by the way at the very top if you wonder so if I click on this element at front I can go to arrange tool and I can click move to back it will jump all the way down I can move forward one, move forward one, we're going up, 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 up. So that's very similar to like Office apps, Microsoft Office, PowerPoint, stuff like that. I do not see like the reason to having this here. Again, maybe they think they will add this extra for beginners, that's all right, I guess, but I still prefer to have full control on my layers, just dragging layers up and down for me. It's just easier for me to understand. Also, you can use keyboard shortcut, by the way. It's command and square bracket. Take a look, command. I think it's control on Windows and square bracket. And then you're moving this up and down by one. So I kind of using a range <laughs> tool by using shortcut, actually. So yeah, I'm a liar. I never use the one at the very top here. So that's not something I'm clicking here. All right, and the last useless tool is cut tool. <laughs> That's right. We got a special tool to draw a cut shape in Affinity Designer, the tool we all need every day. That's, of course, as a joke from developers. If you open all of your shapes here, we got triangles, we got hard tool, all that stuff. You cannot see it, actually. To see it, you will need to open this with option or alt i think on windows press in omag is option and when i open this with option take a look at the very bottom this cut tool <laughs> all right and this as you may guess allow you to draw a shape of the cut like that so we got designated cut tool in our favorite affinity designer so today the video was a little bit different not my favorite tools or workarounds but the tools i do not use very often and why i think there are better ways all around those tools so what are your tools that you are afraid of maybe you don't use them you got better way to work with similar things all right thank you for today and i will see you in my next tutorial bye